students welcome you all to the next session regarding discussion of refrigeration and air conditioning continued part already in the last session students we have discussed regarding the principal working of vapor absorption refrigerator difference between vapor compression refrigerator and vapor absorption refrigerator in today's session students we will be discussing regarding what are the properties of a good refrigerant different types of refrigerants used in the refrigerators what are their properties what are their applications and if you have any queries as i said you can send me an email to this email id which are visible on the screen also you can send me the whatsapp message to this whatsapp number apart from this you can subscribe to my youtube channel where you can leave the comments so that i can clarify your doubts even through the youtube channel also friends with this we will be starting regarding today's session so as i said students there are properties of a good refrigerant are characterized by four main properties the first one is the thermodynamic property second one is the physical properties third one is the chemical properties and the fourth one is the other properties we will be discussing all these properties columns one by one now let us start with the thermodynamic properties column students so if you observe very carefully students a good refrigerant when we are choosing you should see that its boiling point is as low as possible when compared to the atmospheric pressure so there should be low boiling temperature at the atmospheric pressure you know that the boiling point of water at atmospheric pressure is 100 degrees celsius whereas the freezing point of water at atmospheric pressure is 0 degrees celsius so the boiling point should be as low as possible of this refrigerant then only what happens it can extract the heat as easily as possible then even it should have the second is the low freezing point so if it is having low freezing point then when the refrigerant will not get freezed even at low evaporative temperatures so if it is operated at low evaporative temperatures it doesn't get freezed so if you are having low freezing point this is the advantage third important point student third thermodynamic property we should have the latent heat of vaporization as high as possible latent heat of vaporization means the heat required for the transformation from liquid phase to vapor phase so if this latent heat of vaporization is very high and the heat transfer can occur within least possible circulating refrigerant so therefore we can say that it should be as high as possible then the critical temperature it should be very high because you know that in the condenser when the heat is rejected to the air we are providing the external fins for more heat transfer it so if the critical temperature of the refrigerant is very much high then what happens the condensation rate that is heat rejection rate is very faster and by the time it reaches to the one from one end to the other end Reduces the heat state completely, and the refrigerant comes back to the liquid phase. So, therefore, the refrigerant should have should be very should have high critical temperature for easy condensation of the refrigerant vapor. So, these are the four thermodynamic properties. Now, beginning with the, the next category, that is the physical properties. So, the physical properties. The first one we have the low viscosity. so viscosity is the thing when it is a property of a fluid which offers resistance when it is moving over a particular layer so for this the example is suppose from one end uh, there is water which is flowing over a layer over, over a road and the other end say if this is this is a uh, water which is uh, water is there and along with that there is also oil so if i make water and oil to flow on a road water flows very much faster than compared to the oil because the viscosity of water is very low it offers less resistance whereas oil is having more resistance than compared to water and this resistance property itself we call it as viscosity so therefore the refrigerant which are having which we are using in our refrigerator we should see that it should have as less as a small viscosity if its viscosity is very higher than what happens the compressor has to do lot amount of work to circulate the refrigerant to the entire cycle so you should see that you should have low viscosity for easy circulation within the refrigerator 
then you should say that you should have a low liquid specific heat as well as high specific vapor heat high vapor specific heat which increases the refrigeration effect per kg of the refrigerant is circulated in the cycle then you know that in the compressor the vapor is being compressed so when the vapor is being compressed its specific volume also comes into action there so the specific volume is as low as possible then the work required for compression is also very less and can pass easily through the entire network so therefore you should see that for a refrigerant it should have low specific volume which means it takes only less space inside the refrigerator and even the work required for compression will also be the less work then the ability to conduct heat we call it as thermal conductivity stores so a refrigerant used to be sensitive that it should be having a high thermal conductivity so that the heat transfer can take place at a faster rate that is when the refrigerant is passing through the evaporator tubes if the thermal conductivity is very high then it absorbs all the heat at a higher rate similarly when it comes to the condenser it can reject the heat at a faster rate to the surroundings so you can say that the thermal conductivity is very high then <clears throat> it should have a good electric insulation such that if there are if that there should be any no type of shocks or life risks should not be there moving on to third category of the properties we call it as chemical properties students here the third category says that when the refrigerant when which is passed through the refrigerator we said that there are chances sometimes there may be leakage in the refrigerator also through the tubes and all under the compressor so when this happens we know that we are storing a lot of food metals inside the refrigerator if the refrigerant mixes with the refrigerator it may damage the food material so therefore <clears throat> when we are using the refrigerant you should say that it should be non toxic from a health and safety point of view then this refrigerant which you are using you should see that it should be non flammable and non explosive why because as i said when there is a sudden leakage in the refrigerator and you are running the refrigerator with the help of electricity so if the refrigerant comes in contact with electricity and if it is highly flammable in nature it may catch fire certain times it will lead to explosion also so to avoid risks of fire and explosion you should prefer non flammable and non explosive refrigerant then as this refrigerant is flowing through all the parts evaporator compressor condenser throttle valve which is passing through all types of tubes it is under continuous motion for many number of years so these parts they may corrode if there is moisture content in the refrigerant so you should you see that the refrigerant which is using which are using for the refrigerator it should be non corrosive nature such that the refrigerant components should not undergo corrosion then if there is suddenly uh, when we are using the refrigerant you should see that it should be good chemical stability which means the evaporator when it gets in the evaporator when it absorbs the heat it changes from liquid phase to vapor phase so when one to the phase change occurs its chemical stability that is a chemical reaction it should remain the same itself so choose a refrigerant in which there is no chemical reaction happening or you can say that a good chemical stable refrigerant is there then sometimes you know that when the refrigerant is passing through the compressor in the compressor we said we are having lot of moving parts that is a piston is there cylinder is there then this piston motion is reciprocating motion so lot of wear and tear happens within the compressor so to get to have reduce wear and tear we are adding a lubricating oil in the compressor this refrigerant comes it uh, combines with the lubricating oil and should say that the refrigerant which is which are using it should very easily mix with the lubricating oil which means we say it as easily miscible with the lubricating oil these are some of the chemical properties students then other properties is nothing but how the regarding the transportation of this uh, refrigerant whether it is easily available low cost other things so you can say that the refrigerant you are choosing it should be easily available in the, in the surrounding places it is cheaper we can handle it very easily and more important is uh, its impact on the ozone layer so uh, you should uh, keep all these points in your mind 
and then choose a refrigerant. No doubt, any refrigerant will not satisfy all these properties. Words, whichever refrigerant you choose, they will not satisfy all these properties. If one satisfies the good thermodynamic properties, sometimes it may fail in the chemical properties. Sometimes it it satisfies physical properties, it may fail in the chemical properties. So you should make a list which properties it is going to satisfy, how many properties it is going to satisfy. The number of good properties. Choose a refrigerant for a particular application. Now the next slide, students, we'll be learning regarding the different types of refrigerants which we are using in the refrigerator. So the most commonly used refrigerants, students. The first one, the most commonly used refrigerant is ammonia. Its molecular formula is NH3. This is one of the oldest and very widely used refrigerant throughout the entire globe. So if you see its uh, no, thermodynamic properties, student, you can see here its boiling point is how much? Minus 33.33 degrees Celsius. Then uh, just now we have uh, we have studied in the previous sessions regarding VAR where we said that uh, the ammonia refrigerant mixes with water as an absorbent where solute is very easily. So therefore, uh, this refrigerant ammonia it is easily soluble in water. Then. Uh, it is having a high refrigerating effect, but the problem is it is toxic in nature also. And it doesn't mix easily with the lubricating oil. We say it as immiscible with the lubricating oil. Sometimes it may lead even to the explosion also. Why? Because it is flammable in nature. And apart from that, if you touch this ammonia with your bare hands, sometimes you may feel irritation of your skin and it will lead corrosion to the metal parts of your refrigerator also. But the only good advantage of this one is students, it is easily available in the nature and it is cheaper in nature. So therefore, it is an economical type of a refrigerant and the impact on ozone layer, it is very, very less when compared to the other refrigerants. So you can say that almost it doesn't harm the ozone layer. So you can see you are having these properties, boiling point is this much and these are the good properties, economical and does not harm ozone layer. But what about other things? It is. It doesn't mix with the lubricating oil. It is exposed in nature, and it will lead even to corrosion. Also, these are the things. Applications. If you observe students of this particular refrigerant, we are using especially in where for ice manufacturing plants. We are using this one. We are using for packaging plants, especially for cold storage. We are using this first refrigerant that is ammonia. <coughs> then. The second type of refrigerant stones that is sulfur dioxide. This refrigerant generally if you observe it is a non-flammable which means it is non-explosive, non-corrosive and its boiling point when compared to ammonia its boiling point is how much it is minus 10 degrees Celsius. So its boiling point is higher when compared to the ammonia therefore its refrigerating effect you can see there is how much low refrigerating effect variation of 23.33 degrees Celsius. So therefore, there's a low refrigerating effect. But the problem here is towards if this sulfur dioxide mixes with water, it forms a sulfur gas, it means chemical stability is not there. It may go for chemical reaction also. So along from that, if there is a leakage in the refrigerant, there is a suffocation. Sometimes you'll get a bad smell, irritating odor, and the moisture it forms sulfuric acid, and it leads to the corrosion of other parts also, it means if you observe, except non-flammable high boiling point, all you are having some disadvantages. Then, especially we were using them in the olden days, that is in the domestic refrigerators only. But today, the government has banned regarding these refrigerant in the market. We don't use refrigerant. Third one, students, carbon dioxide. Its molecular formula CO2 it is also non-toxic, non-flammable inexpensive and it is an odorless gas so no problem of even the bad smell also but its normal boiling point it is how much it is how much minus 77.6 degrees celsius and along with this uh, the density if you compare it is how much it is 1.53 times heavier than the air so therefore if it is heavier than the air therefore the pressure operating pressure it is still much more power required so, for high operating pressure, more compressor work is required for this refrigerant carbon dioxide. 
so especially where you are using this one especially when there is when there is no specific water metals we are using in large ships air air conditioning systems and or chillers you can prefer the carbon dioxide refrigerant then the next refrigerant is freon in the freon you are having lots of groups of students so these refrigerants we are widely using right now also so these are really highly efficient and whatever the disadvantages of the first refrigerants is speed that is uh, ammonia sulfur dioxide and carbon dioxide so to some extent some of the disadvantages they are overcome here they have been overcome here in this freon group of refrigerants in this again we have categorized into sub categories that is freon 12 which is also known as r12 and its name it is dichlorodifluoromethane ccl2 f2 so when we use this particular refrigerant it is non flammable in nature non explosive non corrosive odorless so almost you can say that the chemical properties are very very good here but its boiling point is how much it is minus 29.8 degrees celsius here is the minus sign minus 29.8 degree celsius we are using this especially for the domestic refrigerators water coolers air conditioners in the automobiles and other things also freon 12 then if we compare this one with the freon 22 the freon 22 is r22 it is also known as chloro difluoro methane chcl f2 its boiling point is minus 40.8 degree celsius we are preferring for large capacity plants such as air conditioning units with low and medium temperature of refrigeration then the last type of refrigerant stones we call it as modern day refrigerants or even by the name known as hfc that is hydrofluorocarbons so these are very good compared to the freon group of refrigerants and here we don't have any chlorine atoms so all the chlorine atoms instead of that we are having the fluorine atoms here so that is the reason that there is no ozone depletion so if there are chlorine atoms there may be ozone depletion but the absence of chlorine atoms reduces the risk of ozone depletion so if you see its properties students it is they are favorable thermodynamic good health and safety properties are there it is non corrosive in nature non toxic and non flammable with a normal boiling point of how much minus 15 degrees celsius so they are used especially in the air conditioners then commercial refrigerations we are preferring these refrigerators so these are the things these are the things for the modern refrigerants used in air conditioners commercial refrigeration etc so these are the properties and applications of the different kinds of refrigerants which we have used in the refrigerators i hope all these points are clear to you students in the next session we will be discussing regarding air conditioners types of air conditioners etc thank you students